If you are somebody who is looking to upload to YouTube or any platform for that matter with the intention of launching a business or starting your career, you certainly should not go in blind. You need to do your research, understand where you're uploading to, and make an informed and educated decision. Who is the CEO? What is their track record? Who are the managers and what is their management style? What kind of moderation is done on the platform? What kind of monetization strategies are there? What are the growth projections for that platform? If there are content creators similar to you, what has their experience been? Is there a lot of growth? Is there a lot of money? Is it risky? Do they get banned a lot? What kind of regulation is risking that platform? What kind of politicians are talking about regulating the platform? These are all things that you need to consider before making the extremely risky decision to build your business on somebody else's platform. This isn't exclusive to online. This isn't exclusive to the e-marketplace. You would do this exact same thing if you were looking to start a real-world business to open a brick-and-mortar store. You would look at the, at the property manager, at the landlord. Who are they? What is their track record? Are they successful in running their properties? What do their tenants have to say about them? Are they lenient? Do they evict people a lot? What is the neighborhood you're looking to open your business in? What are the demographics? What is the income breakdown? Do people live paycheck to paycheck or have a lot of disposable income? Who is the politician responsible for the district you're opening your business in? These are all things that are very similar to the online marketplace because all of these factors impact a brick and mortar store, just like all of the factors that I just discussed impact online content creation. But for some reason, when it comes to online businesses, the reason I put businesses in air quotes is because I don't view my YouTube channels as businesses, but a lot of people, when they're starting their online businesses, don't really think of it the same way as they would think of it if they were opening a brick and mortar store. They're much more lenient. They're much more risky with their decision making. And that needs to change. That is why I have been such a big advocate for owning your own space online. Because then you aren't at the whims of the moderation staff at that moment. You aren't at the whims of ever-changing policy. You aren't at the whims of politicians coming in and regulating the platform that you're on. That's why I think every single content creator should have their own website, have their own domain, like bandrewsays.com, podcastage.com, geeksrising.com, bandrewscott.com, watchcastage. Dot com. Yes, I have a lot of domains, but those are all spaces that I own and spaces that I control for the most part. I don't own every single aspect of them, so I could still technically be deplatformed. I could still technically be taken down. But by having these websites, if I get kicked off of YouTube, if YouTube shuts down, if Instagram or Twitter shuts down, people still know where to find me because I promote these URLs, maybe not as much as I should, but I promote them. So people will know where to find me. So if you are somebody who is looking to start your business and launch your career, research the platform, understand what the future of that platform may hold, and also make sure that you have a spot to exist online if the platform you're building on ceases to exist. Because if the past tells us anything... These platforms are not forever. Look at MySpace, look at LiveJournal, look at Friendster. These are all websites which we thought would reign supreme forever. MySpace was the biggest thing in the world. And it lasted, what, four or five years? So as impossible as it seems, YouTube doesn't seem like it could disappear, but it could. It could very easily disappear. If the Section 230 stuff goes the wrong direction, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of these social media sites could disappear. Depending on the ruling on Section 230 in the Supreme Court. To me, that's extremely concerning, but it's a good thing that I've been building up these websites for years and years. I have been promoting these URLs for years and years. So as long as URLs aren't confiscated... I can just redirect any of these URLs to wherever I am next. I can keep my own website. 
But if I don't have a website anymore, I can just have podcastage.com link to newvideosite.com and slash podcastage whenever that goes up. Or I can host my own videos and keep up my own website. Another added benefit to having my own website is I don't have anybody else moderating it. And on YouTube, that is a big issue. When moderation action is taken, they don't communicate why it was taken or where you violated policy. They don't say policy X was violated at 1 minute 32 seconds on this video. They should, but they don't. I understand a bit of the opacity or the opaqueness of their policy because they don't want people to learn how to move around it. They don't want people to be able to bypass it or trick the system. But if they want people to continue to be able to successfully build careers on their platform, they should communicate more. So I agree with you on all parts. People need to research and understand what they're uploading to. They can't go in blindly because that is terrible business practices. They need to understand the forecast, the projections of the platform, understand the regulatory risks of the platform, and they need to understand the moderation risks. It would be amazing if moderation action was communicated clearly, but as it stands, it is not. And as long as we continue to play in YouTube's playground, we are at the whims of their moderation staff. They should improve it. They don't have any incentive to. They don't have any incentive because there's still no competition. There's no real competition for long-form content yet. I think I saw something about TikTok wanting to get into long-form video, but there you go. That is my response. Do your research. Make an educated decision. Do not go into an online business or an online career blindly. Thank you very much for the comment, Dan. I appreciate you.